What's going on you guys, Pyroethics here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I build my 10 shot rack. This is not a how to do a video, but this is how I do my 10 shot rack. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. All right guys, so I'm here. I'm outside of uh, Lowe's right now. I was gonna go to Home Depot, but I didn't wanna travel two more miles and this is the closest to my house. So um, here at the lumber yard. So see you guys inside. All right, so we made it. Right now I'm looking at the woods. Here are the prices. 374 for a 2x4. <clears throat> Which is really, really good. Doesn't really matter. Any 2x4 will work. They're all the same price. But I'm gonna go to the uh, to the discount because sometimes they have like free cut woods already that nobody wanted. So I'm gonna go over there and take a look at it. All right, so they didn't have any uh, uh, pre-cut woods and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be taking this two by four by eight and stuff. And right now it's going for 374. So now the key to looking for a two by four is you gotta see if they're straight. And that's how I look at it basically. And if they're straight, it's good. You don't wanna grab a bend or a curved wood because it's gonna mess up your measurement and stuff like that so before you buy your wood uh, you gotta have your measurements with you if you want to get it cut over here all right so it looks like I do have to go to Home Depot because the saw is broken so uh, we'll take another trip all right all right round two here we go at Home Depot this time um, I could have cut the wood myself. I could have bought the woods at Lowe's. But uh, it's, I didn't really want to chop the, the wood at my house because it's, it's too hot outside. And it's uh, 115 degrees right now. So yeah, I didn't feel like cleaning up and I didn't feel like uh, working in the heat. So that's why I wanted to have the saw working so they could cut for me. I just had to give them the measurement. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the uh, wood stuff so see you guys there here we go again in circles I think I heard it all we've been here before we need something more something more something more what you said I can't hear cuz you ain't so bad here's a two by four so it's a little it's more expensive than Lowe's by five cents, but that's a difference anyway. So we'll see if they're straight and uh, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I found me some white wood. I noticed the white wood two by four are actually a lot lighter than the uh, green dofer. Right there. And this is the white wood and it's, it's the same price as the one you saw at Lowe's. And they're a little bit lighter than that one, so which is really, really good because I really want it to be light. I don't want to be a, I don't want to do any heavy lifting and stuff so as you can tell picked up it took me a while too see I messed that up I'm sorry Home Depot but uh yeah it took me a while to find a good straight one so we're gonna go to the one by four now that's for the side and we're gonna be getting the same amount all right all right it looks like they got some 75 percent off here um, <clears throat> they have some one by four and I think I just need two because they're long enough I don't know how straight they are, but it doesn't really matter since they're so thin. See, see how curved that goes? They're so thin anyway. But uh, yeah, I have to find the smallest one and the straighter one than that. But yeah, all right. You know what's funny is now they charge 50, 50 cents per cut, <laughs> but the two are free. So that kind of doesn't make sense. You know, before it was free, that's kind of, of a bummer. But then again, I don't really care, I'm already here. I don't want to waste the gas. So now let's find somebody that will cut my wood for me. But that sucks. All right, so I got the products cut already. I got some long ones. Maybe I could use some for a, uh, like a 12 shot rack or something, who knows. But uh, 
I got them cut and all ready to go. I just need to build them once I get home and I'll show you guys how I do that. All right, see you guys when I get home. and uh, I actually uh, lied to you guys about getting the 2x4 uh, for some reason it slipped out of my mind that <laughs> I was going to use the fiberglass tube and not the HDPE now the fiberglass tube is much thinner than the HDPE one so I forgot to tell you guys that if you are going to do the fiberglass uh, you're going to have to use a 2x3 and then if you're going to use a HDPE one it's going to be a two by four so there's the difference there so I kind of lied to you guys so if you guys are gonna do sorry, one of these um, you gotta get a two by three because it's just the right amount of uh, width on there and it's actually enough to cover or to hold the uh, the base of it so let me uh, show you guys just to make sure it's recording so when you measure these what I do is a so I measure the outside diameter, right? Just the outside diameter. And then what I do is to find the exact, at the actual uh, measurement, is I just keep moving around the edges until I see the longest point, which is two inch and an eighth. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So two inch and an eighth, and then you multiply that by 10, and then, or it depends how many tubes you want to use. If you want to use five, then you multiply that by five. All you got to do is convert the fraction into decimal, which is an eighth is uh, 0.1250, I believe. Yeah, 0.1250. So if you just multiply 2.1250, and you should get the, depends on how many uh, tubes you want to use for your rack. So for this video, I'm going to be using uh, 10 of these, and I'm going to be using a, G4 it doesn't really matter, but it's what I have in hand. So I'm going to be using the G4 tube, and uh, and if you notice, there's actually a base on there. So we're going to have to cut that base off because it's not going to fit on the uh, on my on my rack. So again, this is how I do my racks, and this is not how to do a rack. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do it. So the first step actually is uh, I want to show you guys the tools. Uh, that I want to use. I'm going to use this corner guard. This is used to hold the uh, the two corners off just like that so that way they don't go all over the place and just secure it and then of course if you have a drill you're going to need a drill. It doesn't matter what kind of drill. I got my tiny one. I got a big one but it's low battery so I'm using this and I'm also going to use a drill bit right here. I'm missing one. Um, the reason why I'm using a drill bit is you always want to pre-drill your holes before screwing in your screws because if you don't, you're going to end up cracking your wood and it's going to lose the strength for it as well. So you always got to have your screws. Now for the screws that I'm using, here we go, is this one right here. It's the fast and tight interior construction screw. You can actually use the exterior if you're going to keep this outside because it lasts longer it has that coating in there to prevent it from rusting so if you're gonna use if you're gonna stack it outside I prefer exterior screws but this like 50 cents more and so I grabbed this interior construction screw and I grabbed the uh, two and a half now I could have grabbed two inches but it's not gonna grab these you know it's just gonna be there for a quarter inch and that's not enough strength for it to uh, to hold and support once we actually use a rack 
So the next one I'm using is a well a drywall, but you could use it for this one as long as you got that teeth on there or that little ridges, it'll help it support. So I'm using an inch and a five eight so that way I could screw this in there. Again, uh, it's a little bit longer, not too long, but it's long enough to actually secure the side uh, side wall of the rack. So these are the two screws I'm using. Uh, if you guys want to get the idea, I don't know if you guys can see that video. There we go. <laughs> but uh, these are the two screws. So I got my drill, my screws, my drill bits. Of course, if you don't know your measurement, you're going to need a tape measure. And especially a hammer. Hammer is a big thing to use because this is what I'm going to use to be taking up the base of my uh, of these. So I'm going to actually be showing you how I remove the base uh, in this video right now. All right, so here we go. I had to place the camera in front of me because I can't see. But uh, so what you do is you just tap each end, right? So you just tap each end for uh, to remove the base. So here we go. Just a little bit. Just turn it around. Not too hard. And there we go. Now, if you see this, uh, that's gonna be the glue that was used to secure it from the uh, the base itself right there. So I got a way to remove that. I'll show you guys that. There's a couple ways that you could actually remove this, um, that glue right there. Right there. All right, so I'm gonna be using 10 of these. So the same thing, just go around, right? There we go. And All right, so I finally got the 10 tubes all cut off and stuff like that. I like that word, stuff like that. Sorry, my son is here with me. So, <laughs> uh, there's that. Okay, so I'm gonna be now, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I remove this uh, glue right here. Uh, there's actually a couple ways. You can hit it with the hammer, but it's gonna take you forever. You know, even I'm having a hard time. Um, you can do that, just keep scraping it, or just grab a putty knife and just keep hitting it like this and you'll be able to remove all that glue on there but that's taking too much time and you can also use you can actually use one of these right here uh, the grinder with uh, sorry guys with this you know to actually uh, grind it out you know just grind it out and stuff but I got my own ways you can use a uh, what do you call this a belt sander as well works a lot better with that but today I'm gonna to be using my bench grinder so let me go grab that pause the video and I'll show you guys how that works all right so here's my bench grinder um, sorry this is what I use to remove the glue off of this thing and uh, let's get started Let it walk off <laughs> so it's clear. See that there's no more um, glue that's on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the rest of them, and uh, we'll continue the new video later. All right, so it's kind of getting dark here. Let me show you guys my light. There we go. Uh, I need to stick this somewhere. But anyways, so once you guys uh, got the um, the base or the glue out of the tube. Once you guys get the uh, the glue out of the tube, make sure it fits, just like mine right here. Uh, 
By the way, when you guys are doing that, when you're grinding out the glue, make sure you wear a mask. Because uh, if you accidentally shape off the fiberglass, that's uh, not good for your lungs because that's asbestos. I don't know if you guys know what that means. You guys can Google that. But it's a sickness that you get for inhaling too much uh, fiberglass. So that's the tip for today. So it looks like it fits my rack perfectly. So like it says, the measurement of my rack is 24 point five and the wall right here this wall right here I'm sorry I gotta hold my flashlight uh, that's 11 inches so there's your measurement there and, and then of course the the side wall is also gonna be 24 and a half the same length as the base so what are we gonna do next now is we're gonna actually um, secure it connect it and uh, that's where the sorry there we go I think that works a lot better this this is the corner clamp what this does is it secures your two wood together while you're screwing it in so let me show you guys how that works I'm gonna hold my camera down so let me move that out of the way so what you do is you basically put this like that there we go and then all you gotta do is just make sure it's straight here right now sorry guys there we go so just make sure that these two walls right here are straight and then you just you can just tighten it there we go so it's secure there and we just gotta make sure this is lined up straight there we go and then tighten this see see how it moves you can go ahead and just slowly adjust this and then go ahead and just move it that way come on focus little camera there we go I know somebody told me hey I can lock the focus on my phone on my camera but I gotta go search out how I do that so now that you're sure that that's lined up which I'm pretty sure that's lined up now there we go we can go ahead and uh, start screwing it so I'm gonna put the phone back into the uh, the stand and I'm gonna start drilling all right so I got it secure for you guys here's my drill there's my drill bit make sure that the diameter of your drill bit is not as thick or wider than the, your screw because if it is uh, then your screw is not gonna hold so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and uh, pre-drill this I, I don't think my drill bit is long enough for it just make sure it's actually gonna hit the wood underneath there we go so that's pre-drill and then, so we're gonna use two of them. There we go. So now that we got that pre-drilled, here, let me show you guys. There you go. Make sure it lines up. But once we got that pre-drilled, we can go ahead and uh, screw in our screw. We're gonna go change the bit real quick. There we go. And we're gonna go use our two inch and a half screw. There we go. Oh, yeah. we go and we gotta go one more all right so as you can tell that's on there I don't know if you guys can see the light there we go it's all in there and I can just release this and I uh, should hold together all right so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, remove the corner clamp out. Let me show you guys up close. All right, there you go. There's that, and it's firm on there. So we're gonna go ahead and do it on the other side as well, and uh, see you guys in a bit. All right, so we got the second part done. Let's go ahead and loosen this, loosen that. And then we got the side walls all firm on there. See what I mean by at least a little bit longer? Because it actually stay firm on there and doesn't move. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the side wall. Um, and again, I showed you guys how to make sure it's straight. You see how it's curved? 
so what you want to do is that curve if you have a curve like that you always want to put that in the bottom and you always want this facing towards the inside of your rack so let me show you guys what I mean you see how it's curved like this um, so the curve right here it goes like this so we're gonna put it in here just like that so you make sure that the curve is inside so that way it'll hold your tube uh, together and once you screw it in it's gonna finishing the uh, the rack myself but uh, you, you get the point after you screw it in you know uh, make sure it's secure everything is good um, see how loose it is still which is perfect for me to take out you know and it goes in there perfectly no problem no hassles and, uh, see it's still gonna be it's all right to be loose like this see that which is really really good so now you can't just leave it off like this if you're you gotta secure it and by securing it you gotta have to make a stand for it and what I mean by stand is to have it support because once you light it like this this will cause the whole thing to vibrate and it will tip over so the way to secure this is if you can just grab any it doesn't matter uh, how long this is you could have a 12 inch and so you screw this on the bottom like that you just screw it in there and then it'll prevent it from tipping over you gotta do it for both sides so one right there and one on the other side and it will help it from not tipping over and you will have a safe um, you will have a safe rack now the reason why I built this is I'm gonna make a 50 shot rack which is also fanned um, I'm a fan of uh, fan cakes and fan racks I don't know it, it spreads out the break more so there goes my rack guys I apologize if the information's not all there because like I said this is how I do my rack I don't really uh, what do you call this uh, I'm not a type of guy to do a how-to video because uh, I can't explain it but I know what I'm doing it's that type of stuff so anyways there goes my rack looks good I just if now if I want to paint it I just remove the screws paint it and uh, add some more design into it or whatever but uh that's in the future project i gotta show you guys anyway i was thinking about carving my name or or a logo in there uh in the future so hope you guys like this uh how i make video and uh stay tuned for more all right guys thanks for watching peace out